The 1950s were an era of aircraft innovation. Engineer Frank Piasecki believed that conventional helicopters were not designed to their full potential, so he came up with a unique blueprint that would eventually be known as the Flying Banana. This H-21 helicopter had a long fuselage, two rotors in a tandem arrangement, and its rear slanted upwards to prevent the blades from overlapping. Although the H-21 was initially designed for sub-zero weather conditions, the helicopter honorably served the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. The distinctive aircraft was mainly used as a troop transportation carrier, but the H-21 was also the mainstay combat air assault force helicopter during the earlier years of the conflict. Piasecki's Flying Bananas Engineering student Frank Piasecki believed that the conventional tail rotor in the helicopter stole power from its engine and prevented it from lifting even further. To rectify this, Piasecki came up with a design that involved two main rotors and a tandem arrangement. To prevent the two blades from overlapping, the fuselage was slanted upwards at the rear so that it would sit higher than its front. In the early 1940s, Piasecki and his engineer friends formed a small company to pursue several design ideas. The PV Engineering Forum would eventually become the Piasecki Helicopter Company. After a few failed attempts, Piasecki Helicopters eventually sold the tandem motor idea to the U.S. Coast Guard. Beginning in 1944, the aircraft company designed a series of helicopters, starting with the HRP-1 Rescuer. Because of their odd fuselage shape, Piasecki's tandem helicopters were nicknamed the Flying Bananas. In 1949, Piasecki designed an improved all-metal version of the HRP-1 with two tandem three-bladed counter-rotating rotors. Piasecki sold the U.S. Air Force on the idea, as the helicopter was intentionally designed to be an Arctic weather medical evacuation aircraft that could operate under sub-zero temperatures going as low as negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The helicopter flew for the first time in 1952. The Air Force initially ordered 32 models of its first variant, equipped with rescue hoists and heavy-duty heating. But as the Piasecki Helicopter Company continued to develop more variants, the U.S. Air Force signed a contract to acquire hundreds more. Time to serve. The H-21 started its successful run by setting speed and altitude records. At the time, strict laws prohibited large aircraft from serving in the U.S. Army. So if a sizable helicopter was required, the Air Force was expected to participate. The H-21's second variant, H-21B, was built specifically for this purpose. It had self-sealing fuel, oil tanks, and provision for external fuel tanks. When the Korean War ended in July of 1953, restrictions over war aircraft's permitted size were eased. The Army immediately acquired a few of the Air Force's H-21s. By the mid-1950s, the H-21 also served in the French-Algerian conflict's French side. It was used as a means of transportation for troops, as a medical evacuation aircraft, and in a ground attack role, where it failed to meet the French Air Force's expectations. The U.S. Army wanted more from the aircraft. With a higher and more useful load, and a fuselage-mounted sling that could handle 4,000 pounds, the H-21C, or Shawnee, began to be delivered in 1954. By August 24, 1956, two years after their acquisition, the Army accomplished the first transcontinental helicopter flight when a Shawnee, nicknamed Amblin Annie, departed from San Diego and landed safely on the Pentagon's helipad. The 2,600-mile flight also achieved the first successful helicopter in-flight refueling maneuver with the help of a U-1A Otter aircraft. As exciting as these record-setting missions were, the Army was more interested in testing the Shawnee's value as a combat air assault helicopter. They saw potential in the helicopter's capacity to carry a whole infantry squad. The U.S. Army subsequently performed several experiments with the H-21s to test their abilities as gunships. Some helicopters had door guns installed, while others were equipped with 50 caliber remote turrets typically used in B-29 superfortresses. Vietnam. In 1961, the U.S. Army's first H-21s arrived in Vietnam. The Shawnee is said to have served its pilots well enough, even though the helicopter was a complex machine navigating outside of its comfort zone. According to Robert J. Brandt, first lieutenant at the 33rd Transportation Helicopter Company during the Vietnam War, quote, the H-21 was a very reliable helicopter. However, the engine was just not designed to be run at the constant high RPM and manifold pressures used in a helicopter. It was meant to be used in regular aircraft, in a fixed-wing aircraft. You go to full power for takeoff and climb, and then throttle back for cruise flight. In a helicopter, the engine is running near its limit all the time, so it wears out pretty quickly. Because the H-21 was deliberately designed for cold weather conditions, it performed poorly in the tropical and humid Vietnamese weather. Shawnee pilots reported that their engines lasted less than 200 hours versus their flight expectancy of 600 hours. 
The Shawnee was capable of vertical takeoff, but pilots usually made rolling departures to avoid excess turbulence during the transition from vertical to forward flight. It was also a more accessible maneuver to execute due to the overworked and overheated engines. The helicopter mainly operated in Vietnam as a carrier of troops going into combat. But despite being capable of carrying 20 passengers, the weather conditions only allowed the aircraft to fly nine people while operating in Southeast Asia. With no armor plating and the door-mounted machine gun as their sole means of defense, the aircraft were highly vulnerable to enemy fire. The Viet Cong eventually learned to aim at their most exposed areas, and in July of 1962, an H-21 shootdown that took the lives of four soldiers was responsible for some of the U.S. Army's earliest Vietnam War casualties. Staring at the enemy. Despite being used mainly as a transportation vehicle, the Shawnee often flew special missions. On one occasion, First Lieutenant Robert J. Brandt from the 33rd Transportation Helicopter Company was tasked to carry South Vietnamese troops into a Viet Cong-occupied village. The Army of the Republic of Vietnam had been trying to dislodge the enemy for weeks. Brandt's H-21 was usually the last in the formation. He was instructed that if they were called upon by the forward air controller, who was flying a Cessna 01 Bird Dog, his unit and the other adjoining helicopters would need to land additional troops to hinder the enemy's escape routes. Brandt and his co-pilot, Chief Warrant Officer Bryson J.C. Penny, were orbiting the area when the call from the Bird Dog came. The forward air controller had spotted the enemy, retreating from the southwest side of the village. As Officer Penny managed the helicopter's throttle and turbulence from the other aircraft's rotor wash, Brandt brought the Shawnee down and landed in a wet paddy field. After touching down, Brandt heard loud cracking noises, and several holes appeared in the cockpit next to him. The first lieutenant looked at his body and realized he'd been hurt. He then looked over and saw Officer Penny hunched down in his seat. They had inadvertently landed in the middle of the retreating Viet Cong forces. Brandt ordered his door gunner to shoot at the enemy, but he couldn't do it because he could hit other H-21s landing in the area. Brandt and a now-conscious Penny stood still and stared directly at the Viet Cong soldier who had shot them. The South Vietnamese troops aboard Branch H-21 then jumped out of the helicopter and returned the fire. The Viet Cong soldier who was staring at them ran away, but was shot down before getting far. Brandt then reached for the first aid kit in the aircraft's seat bottom and tended to his wounds. He was able to control the bleeding, and the bullet ultimately caused only minor injuries. Brandt later found out that his helicopter was the only one with survival kits installed under the pilot seats. In the other H-21s, the kits had been repositioned to the avionics compartment. Phase out. After Frank Piasecki left the Piasecki Helicopter Company in 1956, it became Verthal Aircraft Corporation. The company continued developing Piasecki's rotor line. It eventually produced the CH-46 for the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps, as well as the now iconic CH-47 Chinook for the U.S. Army. Verthal also evolved into the Boeing Helicopter Company, which is currently developing an updated version of the Chinook for both the U.S. Army and the Air Force. By the mid-1960s, the jet-powered Bell UH-1 Huey helicopter joined the U.S. Army. Although it had a more modern and efficient design, the Huey did not replace the Shawnee. The Huey was particularly designed as a medical evacuation helicopter and could only carry four or five people, so if more troops needed to be deployed, the Shawnee would be called to action. As a result, operations during that time were conducted with mixed formations of Shawnees carrying troops and Hueys flying armed escort. By 1965, the CH-47 Chinook was deployed to Vietnam. Later that year, most Shawnee helicopters were withdrawn from active inventory for both the U.S. Army and the Air Force. Over 700 Shawnees were produced in total, and 20% of them were sold to foreign nations such as Burma, Canada, France, Japan, Sweden, and West Germany. Some of these H-21s served well into the late 1970s. Today, piston-engine heavy-lift helicopters like the Shawnee have been replaced by more powerful gas turbine vehicles. Nevertheless, the H-21 achieved its purpose, even under the perilous Vietnamese weather conditions. Piasecki's H-21 design ideas are still used in some modern helicopters, which speaks to the lasting power of the flying bananas.